All right, welcome to the Daily Fantasy Flex. Yes, a new name. We have started a new podcast. It's called the Daily Fantasy Flex. This is the first ever show. Adam, you're on the first ever Daily Fantasy Flex. How's it feel? Wait, I wasn't even aware that, that I, I was on the, the, the first ever show. Talk to me. What, 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 what is the first ever show? Yeah, I know. I just sprung this on you. I, I realized as I was hit record, <laughs> that I, I needed to do the correct name. So we, we have three podcasts. So we've, we've just had the, the DFS Roundtable with Matt Freeman that you've been a part of. Mm-hmm. We've had the Fantasy Labs podcast that has been both uh, slate-specific stuff. So we've obviously you know, used it to break down the NBA slates. Uh, you know, we have PGA coming up. We we're, we're recording that one later tonight. We're going to break down that slate. And then MLB, obviously, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, but that, that podcast also did interviews where, you know, I would interview people. I interviewed you before the NBA season or mm-hmm. in, before NFL. Yeah. Yeah, where we kind of talk. So uh, that podcast was kind of doing both things. So we decided to split them up. So the Fantasy Labs podcast is still here. It's just going to be solely interviews where we talk about game theory. And the Daily Fantasy Flex is a new one that is officially tonight that is going to talk all slight specific stuff. So it's going to be NBA, PGA, MLB, NFL once we get it back around. So that's it. So I will, I'm will. i going to put out a big post tomorrow explaining all of them, how you can subscribe. But uh, yeah, this is the, the new one. So Adam, big, uh, big news for you. I sorry I didn't mention it, but I just remembered as I hit record. So God, I'm 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 nervous. I'm nervous now. Jesus. Yeah, don't mess up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's Tuesday night. Uh, Adam's joining me. We're gonna go through the Wednesday slate of games for NBA. Uh, we got nine games, which is nice. We don't have double digits. Usually Wednesdays are niners or, or double digiters, uh, but we're slowing down, approaching playoffs uh, next month, and uh, yeah, it's like kind of the the dog days of NBA but we'll get through it Uh, so we'll jump right in uh, just so we can you know kind of get through this and give you as much as we can Um, we'll we'll start first game is going to be Chicago at Washington uh, and as of right now there's no total on the game but we do have a spread Chicago is uh, three point favorites on the road Um, and just some injury news Uh, Jimmy Butler is probable for tomorrow Pal Gasol is still out. They uh, announced that he was going to be out um, their game on Monday yesterday, uh, but he's also going to be out Wednesday. Uh, Derek Rose is questionable. Dunleavy is questionable as well. And then on the Washington side, uh, Bradley Beal is questionable, and Alan Anderson is questionable. Uh, so let's start um, on the Chicago side, um, and, and I'll kick it to you. What, what kind of stands out to you as far as, you know, um, you know, cash game plays, GPP plays, who, who stands out in this matchup against Washington? Yeah, so we have a lot of injury news to track with Chicago, as always. On Monday, I played both Miritich and Taj in cash uh, pretty much across, across the board, and I thought that was kind of a no-brainer. I was actually surprised yeah. that um, they were not higher owned. I, I just feel like with Pow out, there is so much Go around, and I think Miritich was um, seeing a rise anyways as he comes off of his injury. I think they're feeling more and more comfortable with him yeah. anyways. So assuming that – we know Pau is out. Assuming that Dunleavy uh, sits again, I would be real comfortable going uh, Miritich and, and Pau again. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't at all. I'm uh, sorry, Miritich and uh, – and, and, uh, and Taj. And Taj, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Pau's such a big uh, – weight on their offense. I mean, he's not a, like, he's obviously offensively skilled, but it, it kind of just opens up the offense for a lot of other guys when he's out. Um, maybe even, even more so than the usage uh, would indicate for, for Pal. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely fine with, with Nico and Taj for sure. Um, I mean, fine with some Nick buckets. How do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, you know, like for me, it's guys who score three touchdowns in week four. Like I'm never playing them in week five. And, and when, and when Nick, uh, when Doug McDermott comes off, yeah, it goes nine of eleven and scores twenty nine points in thirty seven minutes. Like you can be sure that I am not playing him. You're gonna fade. Yeah, for sure. Even in cash, and and even like Etwan Moore came out in that game and he like didn't miss a shot either. He finished up eight for eleven, I believe. So yeah, yeah both those guys um, scare me in terms of regression, in terms of uh, going on the road to a Washington team that that seems uh, pretty focused on making the playoffs these days. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I would say that it is kind of a nice spot to fade. Um, but Especially I, Rose is back. 
Yeah, for, yeah, definitely. That that's definitely true. Uh, if if I'll you know just play devil's advocate, I, I do think that maybe the offense runs a little better without Powell. You know, there's just a little more space and a little more movement around the perimeter. And Washington is notoriously awful uh, for their perimeter defense. So I think if there's ever a game, you know. If there was any other team, I would say, and it's it's an easy fade, but like I wouldn't be surprised if you know these guys get hot from three again. Like I can see Nico and 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 Nick Buckets hitting a bunch of threes, especially on DK where you get that three bonus. I get the fade. Like if the the fade is the paper play, I get it. But for some reason, you just Washington has been so awful on the perimeter that it just makes me worry. So maybe just limiting cash for him, uh, Nico and Taj, I think are are, are great. Or limiting. To, yeah, to limit him to tournaments, Nico and, and Taj are great for cash. But, yeah, I, 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 it scares me a little bit to uh, completely fade him. And uh, if Rose is out, Justin Holiday got the start. So I think that, you know, he's a punt play. Both of those guys are just under 4K on DK. You kind of – if you want to get to the, um, you know, the top guys, whether it's Russ or KD, you kind of have to get like a 3K guy in on DK with their pricing yeah. these days. Yeah, I would be concerned. I mean, Holiday did get into foul trouble, but even with Rose out, you know, Holiday only played 14 minutes in his last game, and they still went 10 deep with Brooks and Snell and McDermott off the bench. Um, so that would concern me a little bit. But, yeah, I think the Rose news is is really one worth monitoring really yeah. closely. Yeah, uh, agreed. Uh, okay, so let's move over to Washington's side. Um, you know, I'll kind of give quickly my thoughts and kick it to you. I, I think John Wall's uh, – a pretty elite cash option. Uh, I know he's pricey, but he's just been so consistent. And, uh, you know, especially if Rose, uh, you know, Rose has been a little bit better defender this year, but, uh, you know, the data just doesn't say that, you know, their Chicago is particularly great against point guards, not that necessarily matters against Wall. He's just such a big part of their offense. Uh, so I think he's a fine cash play. Uh, Gortat has been a, a little up and down lately. You know, he had his minutes yanked. You know, he only got two minutes in the second half the other night. Kind of weird situation, but uh, I, I'm not really uh, scared off by that. Or and, and maybe people are going to be. So I think he uh, is an elite tournament option just because, you know, we know how Washington is bad on the boards um, in, in general. And I think he has pretty solid double-double side. So uh, Wall's kind of an elite cash, and Gortat is actually one of my more favorite tournament options, especially on DK where they continually underprice centers. And that's the thing, like, you can say that X center is underpriced on DK, but every center is underpriced right. on DK. So, I, you know, I try not to go overboard on that. I'm sure as we go through, we'll find, hey, I like this center, and I like this center, and I like this center, and I like this center. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, Gortat pick and roll with John Wall is just um, pretty dominant, and we like using John Wall at home. And, and we've seen the Bulls, like, bring point guards to life. I mean, when they play them, like Tony Parker, somehow, like, I don't even know how. And, like – people somehow found Tony Parker against me in cash when he played the Bulls and he went for like 25 and 10 and I just wanted to hang myself. Um, but that's just how bad the Bulls right, yeah. point guards. So, so yeah, it was probably a sharper play than, than I gave it credit for. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess if, you know, if you want to look some of these other guys, I mean, Porter, maybe a little tournament exposure here. I'm not too excited about that. Um, Nene is, was it was a thing, but he doesn't really excite me. It's kind of just wall and core top for me if you're going to go anywhere for Washington. Yeah, I agree. And I think with Brad Beal healthy, it's gotten cluttered there. And also with Markeith, you know, coming in and playing the stretch four, like I never really played Otto Porter, but the only way I would ever consider playing him is if he was playing that stretch four spot, not at the three. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He's much better in that role. Uh, okay, let's keep on moving. Uh, next team we'll hit on is Dallas at Cleveland. Uh, total is 209, Cleveland's nine and a half point favorites. Uh, pretty sizable. Uh, there's no injuries uh, to report on, so that's that's good. It makes it easy. Uh, so let's start on Dallas side, and um, you know I, I'll keep it easy and kick to you. Maybe you can kind of talk me into some guys. Uh, you know, my, the notes that I wrote down is is about Dirk and Parsons are really the only guys that I'm looking at. Dirk, uh, kind of on paper, it says cash because if he's been consistent, he's been killing it the last three games, but. I, the matchup I just really don't like against Cleveland. They're elite front court defense. Uh, really have been against fantasy, you know, big men all year. Uh, Parsons is kind of a tournament guy, but even he doesn't excite me. So I, I'm pretty much just I'm fading Dallas completely. Um, so do you agree, or you uh, you want to talk me into some guys? No, I, I mean I typically don't play guys from Dallas anyways. They run a very balanced offense. Um, yeah. It's hard to project exactly where the scoring is going to come from. And then. 
combine that. I don't typically play a lot of guys against Cleveland, maybe point guards, but I typically don't play a lot of guys against Cleveland. And, and I thought Cleveland um, looked somewhat tired in that last game of their road trip against Utah. And now they get to come home off of a loss and, and be energized uh, against Dallas. I, I really don't like this spot to Dallas. Yeah, so uh, I think we kind of agree on uh, Team Faye Dallas there. Um, Cleveland, how do you feel? I mean, obviously, like you just said, you know, they're they're coming home, they're rested, so maybe a good spot for, for LeBron and Co. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really, like, have strong feelings about using guys against Dallas. I mean, do you have any insight on, on DVP versus Dallas? Yeah, it's about average. It, it's, not, it's not bad, it's not good. It's, it's kind of just right in the middle, so I, I think you kind of just – um, don't really factor in that much. I, I don't think you penalize guys, but uh, I don't think you bump them up either. So, you know, you kind of look at guys like LeBron and Kyrie, who probably their DVP doesn't matter that much anyway because of their talent. I, I usually use DVP a little more towards non-talented guys um, mm -hmm. and try to exploit matchups that way. LeBron, I really don't care about DVP unless he's going against Kawhi. That's about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I think LeBron's a pretty easy cash play if you want to go. He's been really consistent lately. Um, I think Ty Kyrie's, you know, a, a pretty awesome tournament guy. Um, Love Love is kind of the hard one to peg. I I'm not really sure how I feel about him. I don't really love him at all, but yeah, maybe. I mean, for me, it's been all throughout the year. If one of the big three is out, then I play the other two. In, in other sure. situations, I'm not too excited about playing any of them. It's been really hard to project which one. So, yeah, I, you know, like you said, it's a neutral matchup. I'm not going to be falling over myself to, to really play um, any of these guys. You know, if we found out that Mozgov wasn't playing and Tristan was going to play 30 minutes, yeah. that would be something I could get on board with, but I don't, I don't really see that happening. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so Fry, you know, had those massive three pointers. I think that's points. JC wouldn't do that. I, I will say, I actually do kind of like Tristan as a, a very, very low owned kind of contrarian bounce back tournament option. You know, he struggled, um, but I, I think that potentially he could uh, um, do some damage against Dallas. You know, Dirk's not exactly, uh, you know, especially they've been rolling a little more Dirk at center uh, lately, just to kind of. Uh, make their offense a little bit better. And I don't think Dirk can really uh, bang with Tristan down there. So I think that Tristan's kind of a sneaky double-double uh, tournament guy, especially on DK where you get that bonus. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, do we think that Fry is eating into Tristan's minutes at all, or is it just still straight between Thompson and, and Mozgov? Yeah, I think – yeah, I, I'm not really too worried about Fry. Uh, I think it was more of just uh, – um, you know, he got hot, so they let him roll. Um, yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be an ongoing thing. He's more of a, a let's roll him out in a uh, in a playoff matchup and see if he gets hot and wins us a game sort of acquisition more than like he's going to be a legit part of the rotation for me. But Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Uh, cool. Any more thoughts you want to move on? No, let's do it. Cool. Uh, next game we'll hit on uh, Oklahoma City at Boston. Uh, total here is really, really high, so this is going to be an interesting game. Uh, it's 220 and a half. Oklahoma City is three point favorite, so not only a, a high total, but a, a fairly close game. A little surprising uh, just because Boston's coming off a back to back. They're playing tonight. Uh, we'll kind of get into their rotation because uh, I think it's going to be uh, interesting and something that we're going to have to kind of wait till tomorrow, honestly, to, to try to uh, figure out this game. Just kind of quickly, uh, we'll give the injury news that we do know. Uh, Waiters is uh, Deion Waiters is expected to be back for Oklahoma City. Uh, thank goodness there, right? Uh, <laughs> Jay Crowder is going to be out. He's going to be out for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and Olenek is, is questionable. But Jay Crowder is really the guy that um, we're not sure exactly how the rotation is going to set up for Boston. Um, you know, Marcus Smart's getting the start tonight, but it's going to be kind of – I think – Tonight is going to be uh, look at the box score, watch the game, figure out what Boston did, and then try to apply that tomorrow. I know that's that's always tricky because you know you're only looking at a one game sample, but it's kind of what you have to like. There's there's no other way to try to judge it, right? Yeah. So I had you know some thoughts on the Jay Crowder injury, which I think is just a, a massive injury to Boston because they played him so much at stretch four and without yeah. that they're gonna have to go big and I've been looking for reasons to roster Jared Sollinger all year he averages more DraftKings points per minute than Isaiah Thomas more than Carmelo Anthony more than 
Nick Vucevic, like Jared Sullinger on a permanent basis is just Mm -hmm. a monster. So I I used him uh, tonight against the Pacers. We'll see how that works. It obviously wasn't the best matchup, but I felt like I wanted to get on before everybody else uh, got on because I think with Crowder out, Sullinger is going to play at least 30 minutes. And if Mm -hmm. that's the case tonight, everybody's going to be on him uh, tomorrow in this really high total game, even though it's not uh, a great matchup, um, at least on paper for Sullinger. Uh, again so that that was my initial thought I also thought that uh, Evan Turner's role might not change that much Mm -hmm. he has excelled this year uh, under Brad Stevens has been as a ball handler with the second unit putting him extended minutes with Isaiah Thomas with Avery Bradley with Stullinger with guys who have the ball in their hands uh, could be a detriment to Evan Turner because like if he goes and stands in the corner just you know forget it he's going to become Uh, an innocent bystander out there because he can't do anything. He Mm -hmm. doesn't have the ball in his hand. Um, So that was my concern with Evan Turner. Uh, I see he's already played 13 minutes. There's four minutes left in the first half, but he's taking one shot. He has zero points, one rebound, three assists. So So. um, (laughs) made theirs looking good tonight. God willing, it'll it'll keep it up. And and I should note also, you know, so not to uh, brag here, but Selinger already six points, six rebounds. Oh, wow. Two steals and an assist with with four minutes left in the first half. So so yeah, I think Sullinger is going to be uh, end up being super popular tomorrow and, and with good reason. So does that mean fade or does that mean roll with the crowd? No, I mean uh, God, I, I, you know he's going to be too cheap to for me to fade. I think you know relative to his just like when I look at guys like baseline projection, just strict points per minute times projected minutes. Uh-huh. You know, if it's like five or six x. It's really hard for me to fade. Yeah. The, the problem is the Solinger always terrifies me, no matter his salary, no matter the minutes in cash. He's, mm-hmm. he's like, he's the best GPP play. Um, or really has been. I, I guess maybe that changes, you know, if he's going to get the bump that you're expecting. But um, this year, he's just been such a GPP player. He would go for 60. Yep. He could go for 10. Yep. Uh, hard to tell. Um, okay. Uh, so I kind of, we'll, we'll kind of continue with the Boston. So is it kind of just, you know, see and wait for you and, and – and figure it out from there. I, I guess the guys who aren't really going to change, uh, you know, is, is the backcourt. You know, Isaiah Thomas isn't going to change, but yeah, you know, this is kind of a not not a great spot against Westbrook. Interestingly enough, uh, his opponent plus minus the DVP adjusted for plus minus um, or just for salary, kind of our fancy lap specific metric, mm-hmm. uh, is is really good um, against uh, the Thunder. Oh, I love using point guards against Russell Westbrook. Like okay. not only. Our teams typically trailing, but teams are typically way up in pace. And and okay. uh, one of like the model, like the trend models though, that I use for myself is like uh-huh. uh, home underdogs in, in up pace games that play point guard. And Isaiah Thomas is going to check all those boxes. All those, tomorrow. Yeah. I noticed that today he was on DraftKings near the top of the uh, yeah. fan model, regardless of position. I just think he's way too cheap yeah. on FanDuel, and I, I think Isaiah Thomas will be a super strong play tomorrow too. Even on the back-to-back, you're not scared about any of these Boston guys? Yeah, no, I, I think they'll be up for this game against Oklahoma City. I mean, we'll see how tonight goes. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a road home back-to-back. So, at right. least they're going home, back to Boston. It's not like a road road. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, I think playing home is typically um, – I probably put too much emphasis on it, to be honest with you. But I'm a big believer, especially in football, but, but also in basketball, of rostering guys at home. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, we'll quickly touch on Oklahoma City. I think it's pretty easy for me. Westbrook and Duran are both expensive. Uh, Westbrook's always kind of in play if you want to get him. Uh, I'm a little torn on him. The the matchup data wise isn't amazing, but um, you know he's he's Westbrook, so you know you kind of have to go him in tournaments. Uh, Durant got stifled against Kawhi, as happens, and they just really struggled. So uh, I love him as a bounce back candidate, and there's no Jay Crowder to defend him. So mm-hmm. I look, I love the spot for him. I think that he is going to go off. So if I'm kind of picking high, uh, you know, high salary guys, Durant's my guy, honestly. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I used uh, Paul George tonight in part because of what you said that Jay Crowder was going to be out. And I, and I think that makes a big difference for their defense, especially against the small forward position. So mm-hmm. certainly from a, from a positional standpoint, Durant would be the play uh, over Westbrook. Yeah, uh, agreed. And then kind of just going down quickly, uh, you know, the rest of the Oklahoma City guys. Ibaka is always in that no play zone that I talk about. A no play zone, meaning that his ceiling's not really high enough to play him in tournaments, but his floor is a little too low to play him in cash. So I end up just not playing him. Uh, this is just kind of where he's been this year. 
Uh, Cantor, I have no clue what to do. Um, he could put up 40 DraftKings points in like seven minutes. So I have, I honestly just have no clue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and then lastly, if Waiters is out um, for some reason, even though he's expected to be back, the other options that you could potentially look at, Floyd Morrow, uh, Singler, Robertson, Payne, they all suck. So just mm-hmm. kind of fade. So it's kind of just really Durant for me, honestly. Yeah, I think Ibaka intrigues me at 5.5. I mean, uh, he, you know. And the total is so high. Right. And, and you know, front court players against Boston, I think, have been extremely profitable uh, for a lot of the year. And, um, yeah, I mean, Ibaka played really well against Portland, just like everybody did in Oklahoma City. And it only played 26 minutes due to the blowout, but had 30 DK points in 26 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, He's obviously – his floor is super low, but um, I, he intrigues me in this spot. Yeah, agreed. Uh, okay, let's keep on moving. Uh, the next thing we'll hit on is Orlando at Charlotte. Total is 210.5. Charlotte's nine-point favorites, which seems a little high, but uh, Orlando's struggling. They're having a lot of injuries. If you get to in one second. And also uh, of note, Orlando is playing tonight, so they'll be back-to-back on the road at Charlotte. Uh, so not, not a great spot here. Uh, kind of just running through injuries, none for Charlotte, so that probably factors into the line. Uh, and then for Orlando, uh, Vooch is questionable technically, but I, I would say he's more doubtful. Uh, and, and Alfred uh, Payton, I, I would put him in that same category where he's technically questionable, but I would be very surprised if they both played as uh, you know as was the case tonight. So. Um, yeah, so let's start with Orlando. Kind of, how, how did you treat them tonight, and is it kind of how you treat them tomorrow, or is it kind of just maybe fade them because of you know not only are they just super injured, but also you know getting the back to back in Charlotte. Yeah, so the first one of the first guys into my lineup tonight was uh, Victor Oladipo, and and I sure. and I you know probably you know will he'll probably be a super strong play for me tomorrow as well as long as. Yeah. Alfred and Vooch remain out. I mean, he's going to play 35 minutes. He's going to see uh, a ton of usage, and he can do so many different things. I also thought that, you know, if you read in the Orlando Sentinel, they've been uh, – Skiles has – the only one Skiles raves about is Fournier. Like, he loves Fournier. He uh, does, yeah. He calls Fournier his most consistent player. Uh, <laughs> like, loves Fournier. And I actually, like, didn't – I wanted to play Fournier today. I just didn't – uh, just with roster construction, just didn't work yeah. out. And, yeah. and I want to kill myself now because he has 15 points, two rebounds, and one assist uh, mm. in the first half. Um, Where, so, yeah. Where's BJ at? Do you have the box score up? Who? Jennings. Yeah, Jennings has 11 minutes in, in the first half, four points, uh, six assists, one rebound, one steal. But CJ Watson has also come off the bench for 11 minutes. So they've split uh, pretty evenly in the first half so far. I mean, I think yeah. the thing with that is it's like hot hands. Who's ever playing better between Jennings? And Watson will get the burn in the second half. Interesting. Well, four four point six assists sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, no, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I like Jennings. Jennings play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the season, Jennings is like point eight three DraftKings points per minute, and Watson is down at like point six. So like guys who are in the point six range, I really try to rarely play. The, yeah. You know, I'd be much more interested in in Brandon Jennings. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like Jennings, and uh, I don't think his salary has really climbed. I don't think there's any reason. Yeah, I still at three seven for tomorrow. So uh, right. I think that he's definitely in play along with Oladipo and Fournier, right? Right. As um, long as as long as Alfred and Vooch are out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the problem really with the with the front court, you know, if you see Vooch is out, obviously you want to try to figure out where it's going to go. Um, you know, potentially, I, I would assume that a Deadman's going to get the start, but he started last game. Um, Monday and they didn't get any you know he played like what like 15 minutes even though he got the start which is kind of impressive you know you have like Nicholson you have Jason Smith you have Ilya Sova who could play some four maybe some five they get really small but none of those guys are I think are really playable so I think it's kind of just avoid the front court and maybe focus on these cards for Orlando yeah I mean I will say Aaron Gordon has 14 points on six of six shooting in the first half, but but that's against Denver. uh, One of the best possible matchups I think for him. So yeah, I mean, Aaron Gordon is always going to be in play for me, but uh, yeah, I I would lean, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with injuries, but I would lean Jennings, Fournier, Oladipo. Man, if they told me, if Skiles said that we're just going to roll with Aaron Gordon at the five all game, Mm -hmm. I would, I would pay like nine (laughs) K. Aaron Gordon at the five would destroy the world. 
<laughs> It'd be so good. Um, all right, so Charlotte side. Uh, Charlotte's always kind of an easy team for me to break down. It's kind of Kemba and Batum who are both amazing this month. So um, that's kind of about it for me. I mean, Kemba is just white, white hot. And this game yeah. is in Charlotte, if I'm not mistaken. Is, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm also, if I'm not mistaken, he's getting super expensive on DraftKings. Uh, he's 8-8, eight, eight, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know. Who do you like Wall for 94 or Kemba for 88? Um, yeah, that's tough. I, I probably – God, that's tough. I probably take – pr- that is really tough, actually. Uh, that's pretty close. I, I actually probably would take Kemba if I had to choose between the two. But really, the, it's close enough where I would probably build my roster and then kind of see if I needed the savings. Yeah. I mean – I love Kemba. He's like one of my favorite players, but I, I think the Bulls versus point guards would sway me the way of, of Wall playing it at home. And, and believe me, Magic are no like you know defensive juggernaut, especially if Jennings yeah. is going to start. Um, back to back against Jennings is yeah, not, yeah. not a juggernaut I mean, either. Yeah, they're both super strong plays. I'll say that. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, point guard. I think is going to be pretty stacked tomorrow. Uh, you know, even with just those two. Uh, any other Charlotte guys that you're interested in? I, I rarely play Charlotte guys other than uh, you know Batum and, and Kemba, but yeah. you know, maybe you can go dumpster diving for some guys. I, I never do, but no. I mean, I play Batum a decent amount, but I know people lately have been talking up Al Jefferson. I mean, my whole thing with Al Jefferson is like, no matter how cheap he is, even if he's playing his ass off, he's not going to get extended minutes because right. they won't. They just won't give it to him. That's smart. You know, they don't want to burn him out. So right. even if he's like on fire, he's still only going to play 25 minutes or something like that. And, and that's it's something that, that's hard yeah. for me to get on board with. Yeah, he's in that no play zone. His ceiling's not high enough for tournaments, but he has a super low floor. You know, yep. he, he can play four minutes. So it's just not, not really worth it, whether you're a GPP or a cash player. Uh, okay, let's keep on moving. Uh, Atlanta at Detroit is the next game that we have. Uh, 198 total, so low. We got our first one under 200. And it is a pick em right now, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and I have no injuries to report, so a pretty easy game, uh, you know, from the injury in Vegas side. Uh, so we can kind of just jump right into it. 198 total. Um, yeah, this is kind of uh, the game that sticks out as, you know, just not a really exciting one. You know, the the next one, we have Minnesota, who is kind of a high-paced game. We have the Clippers at Houston. We have New Orleans at Sacramento, which is up at 223. And then finally, we have the Golden State game, which is always high. It's at up about 220. So this kind of game sticks out as 198. It's just super ugly. So maybe just a, a spot to maybe maybe pick a couple low and tournament guys, but you just kind of fade in general. Where are you at? Yeah, I mean, I think two underrated defenses, and that's reflected in the line. I don't think people realize that both the Hawks and the Pistons are two of the better defensive teams in the league uh, right now. One thing I do like doing is using rebounders against Atlanta. Uh, They're undersized. They give up a ton of offensive rebounds. Um, Their rebounding differential is among the bottom of the league. So uh, Andre Drummond, who I think burned some people against the Wizards, I I tweeted out – you know, I looked at Andre Drummond in up pace games, basically, mm-hmm. uh, through the Fantasy Labs trends tool and found that he actually struggles uh, pretty grossly uh, in up pace games, does way, way better when their uh, Pistons pace D is down. So this mm-hmm. would be a game where I'd be much more prone to using Andre Drummond. I think he's a, a super interesting tournament play. And like we always talk about, you know, centers on, on DraftKings, he's only 7,800, which is like criminally low for Andre Drummond in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, he was he was been a 10K guy at times this year. So, I mean, you're getting him at a discount of you know, maybe 25, almost 3K from where he was at his peak, uh, which is obviously I think, you know, if we're kind of looking at ceilings, you know, we have to look at that as a possibility. Um, interestingly enough, his rebounds haven't been down, which is kind of, you know, what kind of is intriguing against Atlanta. Uh, so when you're looking at struggles, it's not really the thing that we're – looking at for the, the Atlanta matchup. So I think that um, it's kind of a sneaky play, great play. Um, really what's been down for him is the scoring. You know, he's had in the past three games, he's had seven points and five points in two of those three games. So um, it not really struggled. And one of them against Charlotte, he, he shot a hundred percent at five points. He only took one shot in 23 minutes. So just kind of a bizarre 
offense right now. But uh, you know, I think they'll they'll snap out of it. And if there's ever a time to do it, I think kind of a, a against Atlanta, maybe on the boards, just get a bunch of kind of nice, easy put back offensive boards and dunks. It's a nice play. Yep. Um, any, anyone else for for Detroit? Reggie is always kind of a intriguing. Um, tournament play for me. Uh, he's super low floor, but uh, you know he can really get that pick and roll going with with Drummond, and they can do nice plays together. Yeah, I mean the pick and roll is obviously Detroit's bread and butter. I, I would have to look at the DVP data versus pick and roll for um, Atlanta, but I'd be shocked if they were you know poor in that category. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, so maybe just a little bit of, of drama and not a whole lot else unless you got some really intriguing like low salary guys. I mean, Tobias, I think, is still um, mm-hmm. pretty decently priced. He's down at 6-1. He did get lower minutes, um, but that was, you know, obviously in a, not, not a great game against is Washington. Um, so I think that he's a kind of a nice, sneaky bounce back candidate. He's obviously he's going to get over 30 minutes, and he was solid over 30 DK points in those, so. Um, I'm not sure if his, his ceiling's too high, but I think that, you know, like if you end up with him in cash, I probably don't love him on this big nine game slate where you could go other options in, in bigger total games. But like, I, I don't hate it that much if you, if you end up with Tobias. Yeah. I mean, one thing about Tobias is I, I, I don't know if this is going to change, but you know, with Stanley and Tolliver out, I feel like he was a lock for 36, 38 minutes because they really only had like Reggie Bullock off the bench on the wing. Now with Tolliver and Stanley out, I feel like the minutes of floor is a little bit lower for Tobias, but I might be wrong there. I mean, Stan might just keep rolling with Tobias for 36 minutes every night. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough to tell. So maybe, uh, you know, with that, you were just not sure, but you know where his minutes are going to be. I, I feel a little more secure that they're going to be over thirty. But if if you're uh, worried about that, um, no, definitely over thirty. I just I like playing him when he was like thirty eight, thirty eight as opposed to thirty one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, maybe more of a tournament guy for sure. Um, okay, sort of Atlanta side. Let, let's get into before we move on. Um, Atlanta, I hate talking about. I've you know had talked about this many times on, on the podcast throughout this whole year. I, I just hate rostering them all together. I, I like rostering Paul Millsap, but I hate the rest of this team. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let you take it. Do, do you like anyone? Yeah, not in this matchup. I mean, I, I always think that Jeff Teague is an interesting tournament play because he's one of the guys who, if he's playing well, sees more minutes. Like, um, so he's priced at 5.8 K and like, mm-hmm. if he, ends up playing 33 minutes it'll be because he's playing well and it'll be because he's just gonna absolutely smash now obviously there's a huge downside there because you could argue that Schroeder is a better player and the Hawks seem to feel that way a lot of nights too so I probably won't end up playing any Hawks uh, in this spot but but yeah I guess you could look at Teague he's just so cheap fair Okay, yeah, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this game because it is kind of the ugliest one of the night. Uh, so let's keep on moving. Uh, Minnesota and Memphis is the next game we'll hit on. Uh, there's no line as of right now, um, probably because everyone in the city of Memphis is injured. Yep. Uh, not just the team, everyone. Um, Minnesota, surprisingly, has no injuries, so good for them. Uh, I'll quickly run through Memphis what I have. Uh, Zebo. Uh, the Zach Randolph is questionable. I would I would say he's probably more doubtful. Uh, Conley remains out. He's going to be out. Uh, Lance Stevenson was out. He's technically questionable, but I, I would probably be more probable. I, I would guess that he's going to play. Uh, Vince Carter is questionable, and, I, and that's probably a true questionable. It's probably a game time thing. Uh, and PJ Harris is kind of the same way questionable. So. Uh, Really, Memphis is just really hard to peg. Um, so yeah, so let's let's jump into Memphis side, uh, and I, I want to get your take because I'm really curious. You know what your thoughts? They got crushed, mm-hmm. crushed last game. What was it yesterday? You Monday? Yeah, Monday they, night, they lost yeah. by 49. Yep. Um, so what do you even do? Because they had been playing way way over their heads. Yeah. That uh, and all these guys were great values. So the question is. Uh, you know, w- what was the anomaly? Was it the plane over their heads or was it was it Monday? I mean, when you start J. Michael Green, Ryan Hollins, Briante Weber, Tony Allen, and Matt Barr, <laughs> you're liable to get beat by 49. Like, Is that right? Yeah. I-, I don't know, man. Like, And then when you go to the bench, it's like and we signed Ray McCollum and we have some guy named Alex Stevenson and we have Jarrell Martin. It's like, yeah. I, I mean – 
I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I think they were playing way over their heads and now they're coming back to reality. Um, I know a lot of people got burned by McCallum. I know a lot of people played Briante Weber. I mean, it's hard to play 30 minutes in the NBA and not meet value when you cost 3K on DraftKings. Um, Ray McCallum almost did it. Uh <laughs> Beyonce Weber almost did it. So if anyone can, it's these guys. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really don't Alex know. Alex Stevenson went off though. Yeah, Alex uh, Stevenson. So I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I'll, I'll be open with you guys. I have no clue who that is. Yeah, me either. Yeah, is he related to Lance? I have no clue. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I remember I saw that Lance was out, and then I remember checking the box score, and Stevenson was going off, and I was like, oh my what is going on? I thought Lance was out. Like it really screwed me. I was like, Oh, Alex, Alex Stevenson. <laughs> who is this? I know. And I still have no clue who he is. I know that probably is not a great thing to admit when you're like a host of an NBA pod. Mm-hmm. Um, not a clue who Alex Stevenson is. I yeah. still don't know. I probably should just Google him, but. Well, I, I think they might get Lance and Vince back tomorrow, right? Yeah, they should. So that would change things a lot. And they, they would have a lot That's of players. It. Uh, capable of playing on the wing and you could see some point lance so are they capable though uh, that's that's the question is are they going to be are they going to be good tomorrow right probably not Uh, i mean at least a lot of nba players out there though yeah i mean Uh, i think this is a situation where you'd have to say like hey you know follow shoot around and and do your own minute projection look at justin's minute projection and and go from there because it's definitely a good spot home against minnesota but uh i would want to know like how many minutes Lance Stevenson is going to play and how many at the point, et cetera. Oh, my gosh. Alex Stevenson went to North Carolina. He's my boy. I'm a huge Carolina fan. And you don't know who he is? He, he couldn't even get burned for the University of North Carolina? Is that what you're saying? No, he went – no, he didn't play. He went there from 2006 to 2008. UNC won the championship in 2009, so he was on a loaded team. So he transferred, went to Southern Cal. Oh, I do remember this guy. Yeah, he just never played. <laughs> he was behind Tyler Hansborough. That's not a good sign if yeah, you never played. He was in behind college. Psycho T. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's Alex Stevenson, but he killed. Yeah. So I, I guess the point we can kind of get into actual like usable information for y'all. I don't really know what to do. I, I, I mean, I think that these guys are still good value. Jermichael Green at 6K, though, I think is a little much. Um, but, you know, Matt Barnes, Lance Stevenson, like against Memphis, like, and they're still in the 5K range. Like, if they're going to play and get the 30K, 30 plus minutes, I think that they're still fine. Yeah. I have a hard time with Barnes and Tony Allen. I don't know. I mean, I know Barnes has had some really big games. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd lean more Barnes than Allen if I was forced. Yeah. I know he's a little bit more expensive, but I hate playing Tony Allen. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I mean, his, yeah, he could have a usage rate of like three. Yeah, right. He just never does anything. All right, let's hit on Min- uh, Minnesota real quick before we move on. Um, obviously, you know, I think it's going to be a tougher matchup. Uh, you know, DVP might say a tough matchup, but that was I think DVP just doesn't really get the nuance of the fact that Memphis doesn't have NBA players currently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I-, I wouldn't necessarily put a whole lot of stock into that data. Uh, so we're kind of looking at the, re- the usual suspects, I assume, you know, Towns, Rubio, Wiggins, uh, and Levine. Um all kind of in in good spots here, especially Towns at the top. He's he's expensive. He's he's more than Drummond, which kind of puts an interesting uh, dilemma. You know, do you go Towns at eight one, or do you go Drummond in the seven K range? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's only like three hundred more to Towns. I would probably uh, lean Towns, given sure. if we you know we know. I assume that Pekovic and and KG are both out. Yeah, um, they're going to be out. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, Townsend, Drummond, and Gobert, and Gortat, and everybody is underpriced at the center position, um, yeah. and that includes Towns. So I'm sure he'll be near the top of the models tomorrow uh, once again. And, and yeah, I, you know, I thought for a short time their Wiggins cost less than Zach Levine, which I thought was kind of a travesty. Like, I'm the biggest Zach Levine fan, but I think from a fantasy perspective that Andrew Wiggins is a little bit more consistent, has a little bit higher upside. So Yeah, he's been super consistent lately. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the pricing is, but if Wiggins is around the same price, I prefer him to Levine. He's three hundred more. He's six two and Levine's five nine. And I, I, I agree that I prefer Wiggins. Um Wiggins is definitely cash play. Levine is, is tournament only for me. Rubio has been crushing it lately. He's a six six and he's had two games in a row of fifty plus DK points. So. Right. 
That was uh, again, you know, I, I was on Rubio last night and Wiggins actually against, you know, Phoenix against guards is like my, one of my favorite things to yeah. do right now. Yeah. Uh, even though Memphis is lacking most of their players, I, I, you know, I don't know about getting back on Rubio here. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with it, especially in tournaments, but I, I can understand if you want to maybe not go that way in cash. That makes sense. For sure. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma City and Phoenix. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm okay with it. He's still only 6.6K. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll end up uh, fine with it, but I, it's not like jumping out at me like it was against Phoenix. Yeah. You're not, you're not like falling over yourself to get him in your roster. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, keep on moving. We got just a couple games left. Uh, Clippers at Houston is the next game we'll, we'll hit on. Uh, 214 is the total. Houston is favorites here, actually. Uh, two and a half point favorites. Uh, not really many injuries. Paul Pierce is questionable, probably leaning doubtful. Uh, no injuries for Houston. Uh, so we can kind of just jump right into it. Uh, you know, pretty high total game. Uh, maybe not as high as, as we would expect. Maybe it's, you know, the Blake Griffith thing. If we had, you know, before the season try to peg this total, I think we would have put it in the more closer to 220 range. But, uh, you know, still a game, I think, where we can find some some good fantasy plays. Uh, let's start with the Clippers side. They're pretty easy right now. It's kind of CP3 and uh, DeAndre. I, I will say kind of before I kick to you that uh, the Clippers are on a back-to-back. They're playing tonight. And there is a really tough back-to-back. They're playing the Spurs at home. Or right. the Spurs in San Antonio. And then they have to hop on over to Houston. So uh, they could get beat up pretty hard tonight and then have to face Houston. So that that's always a factor. But, um, yeah, so how do you feel about the, the Clippers? Yeah, so that game was later tonight, and I expect the Clippers to put a lot of energy into that uh, San Antonio game, which would scare me. I would have to check the trends tool to see how they all fared on back-to-back before I felt good about any of them. Uh, yeah. One thing we know is that Houston uh, typically just bleeds fantasy points to everybody. and Everyone. Maybe, uh, <laughs> You know, like, who do you think is the worst right now, like the Suns or, or the Pelicans, like, but, or, or is the Rockets still the worst? Um, no, nah, I think the Rockets. Have, yeah, that's that's tough. Probably the Suns are pretty bad, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're right. But those those three are all all all, all very 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 bad. So uh, I want to use guys against the Rockets. I'm just not sure who I'm going to pull the trigger on um, yeah. from the Clippers here. I mean, I'm JJ Redick is always perfectly fine and and solid. Just is never going to excite me and. Yeah, yeah. with Paul and DeAndre likely to put a lot of effort in tonight, I'm not sure I'll be on them tomorrow. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to play either in cash and maybe there's kind of limited tournament exposure just because of the tough back-to-back. CP3, I think, is the guy that I would be interested in if I was if, if I was going to go, but he's 9-7. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you're kind of just looking, let me, um, let me pull I mean, you have – he's more expensive than Chris – than John Wall. He's more expensive than Kemba. Um, more expensive than Rondo going against the, the Pelicans by a ton. He's 2K more. So, um, and then it's just pretty easy to get up to Steph Curry and Westbrook at just, you know, less than a K more. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to have too much of CP3 tomorrow. Maybe that means that he's a good tournament play, but um, I think in cash you can probably tr- mostly avoid uh, the Clippers side. Yeah, I mean, let's see what happens tonight. You know, maybe some weird happens and they only play 25 minutes. Who knows? But but yeah, I, for now I'll say that I probably won't have as much Clippers as maybe I should. Yeah, and so maybe that kind of ties into, uh, you know, maybe wait and see how what happens tonight because that'll kind of affect the Houston side as well. Um, you know, if they're going to – if they play – you know, a tough, this tough matchup and it comes down to the last minute and CP3 is playing 45 minutes, DeAndre is playing 45 minutes and they're – playing the Spurs really tough obviously you know maybe you want to target Houston a little bit more and, and focus on on guys like Harden and, and Howard it was is that kind of you know that correlation work for you oh yeah for sure if I think a team is going to play well or is in a good spot I'm far more likely to to use their players I mean that's something I do more in the in the NFL but but yeah uh, you know if I think a team is going to play well uh, I'm on them I'm on their players obviously Sure. Uh, so Harden, you know, statistically not not an amazing matchup, but I, I think he's fairly matchup. But the problem is, is he's really expensive. He's ten two. Obviously, he's in that shooting guard spot, which is uh, you know, positional scarcity is definitely a thing, especially in that spot. Uh, Dwight Howard, I think, is fairly interesting at seven eight. Um, you know, he's been really consistent lately. But again, you know, it's just like all of these centers are underpriced. So you're right. 
I, you know, I say on every podcast that centers on DK or enterprise, but it, it doesn't really hold much value if I say it about every center. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and I've been playing Dwight uh, a lot. I, I was, you know, I thought I was in big trouble on Monday night when he got in foul trouble early, ended up with like 40 DK points in 24 yeah. minutes, even though yeah. he took four shots in the entire game. Um, yeah. Yeah. To me, he, Dwight looks uh, healthy and engaged and, yeah. and motivated um, and not like sulking when he doesn't get the ball in the post. So I, I like using um, Dwight a lot lately. Uh, the thing is, like, I don't know what his price is, but, you know, if he's close to Towns, I'm, I'm probably always going to lean. Uh, nah, he's not close to Towns. He's 7'8", so he's, he's considerably lower. Yeah, 300 less, right? So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty close. 300. Yeah, I mean Towns is eighty one, so Oh eighty one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I know Towns there. Like on FanDuel I've been playing Dwight Howard over Towns, but yeah, I think Towns on, on DraftKings probably makes some sense. But but yeah, Dwight is just I mean, super solid lately. Yeah. Agreed. And, and Harden uh, is kind of matchup proof, so especially if LA has a tough matchup. Um I probably, you know, on DK, it's almost impossible to to get in two top tier guys, like 10K plus guys in cash. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of have to pick one. And, and Durant's kind of my pick for tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, j- just personally. So I'm not probably not going to go Harden. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's an awful play. So I mean, someone's been off with him lately. I don't know if it's – I don't know. I mean, he hasn't scored 50 – more than 43 DK points in any of his last three games. Um I don't know. Like he only took eight shots against Memphis. Obviously they didn't need him, but maybe that, you know, I, maybe that's a good time to get on him. They will need him. Um, Some reason to see bias. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe so. yeah. Uh, that's kind of it. Harden and, and Howard kind of it for me. I, I mean, we could look at, you know, Ariza Beverly had a really good game last game, but their, their rotation's pretty solid right now. Um, which just means that I, I can't really trust any of these guys. Uh, so it's kind of just those top two players and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, I will say since they got rid of Ty Lawson, it feels like Beverly's minutes expectation is, um, higher, you know, they don't really have a backup point guard. They've been using James Harden as a backup point guard, a decent amount. So I'm always, uh, at least willing to give Beverly a look if what he was like 5k for a while. I'm not sure what he is now. He is. Uh, he's exactly 5K. Yeah. So I, yeah. I still think Beverly's in play. Yeah. No, he for sure is. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, okay. Let's keep on moving. We got two more games left. So uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, next thing we'll hit on is New Orleans at Sacramento. Uh, really, really high total. Highest of the night. 223 is the total right now. And that might even go up a little bit, I think. Uh, Sacramento is two and a half point favorites. Uh, and just some quick injury news uh, Norris Cole is questionable. I think that's going to be probably a game time thing. Uh, Alexis Agensa is out. Uh, and Ben McLemore, huge news. He is questionable. <laughs> probably doubtful. I would I would really uh, be surprised if he plays. Uh, I don't think really any of those news outside of North School really affects things too much. Uh, obviously, we got some elite studs here at the top. Uh, let's start with New Orleans. Uh, you know, Brow and really, really this matchup is just amazing all around because both Sacramento and New Orleans suck so bad. Mm -hmm. So uh, New Orleans side, I mean, are you, are you as excited about Brow and Drew and those guys as much as I am? Yeah. um, I would say it's pretty close for me between Brow and I would probably say cousins would be my top play of the night. Assuming he comes through tonight clean. Um, Yeah. But Brow would not be far behind. I will say on Drew holiday, uh, you know, we saw them bring him off the bench because they thought he was gassed. I believe that was two games ago. And then mm-hmm. he only played 28 minutes. I know there was a bit of a blowout against the uh, against the Warriors the other night. It feels like they think Holiday is out of gas. He only shot 5 of 16 last game. Maybe he is somewhat out of gas after carrying the team and playing so well for so long. So mm-hmm. he's really uh, – he's like 80-something hundred um, – scares me somewhat but in theory on paper i mean he's a great great play obviously brow is a great great play but one thing that um you can say about the pelicans is that we know who's going to be taking the shots i mean it's going to be brow it's going to be holiday it's going to be brian anderson off the bench and assuming that norris is out uh tony douglas. yeah i mean tony douglas went ham against yeah. golden state and, and has been playing reasonably well lately he's up to 4.8 k so it would even be a question, you right. know, it would be a question for me 
uh, even if Norris Cole is out, which we might not have that news uh, early enough uh, to know. Yeah. Especially on FanDuel. True. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that definitely a good point as far as the late swap goes. Uh, Luke Babbitt, obviously, um, you know, no-brainer, probably easiest cash play of the night. Um, you know, always got to get you some Luke Babbitt in your, your cash <laughs> Um, actually, he's you know I was joking, but he's actually been pretty solid the last. Yeah, game. you might not be joking. He's played 30, <laughs> thirty-five minutes the last two games. Yeah, and he's three-nine. So um, I'll let you decide for uh, listeners whether uh, I was joking about Luke Babbitt. Um, if he goes off, then I was not joking. If he sucks, <laughs> that's how it works. Um, okay, so yeah, so I think it's pretty easy for New Orleans. Yeah, obviously a uh, great matchup here for especially. For for Brow, um, Sacramento is not great. I, I do think there is a little bit of uh, hesitancy on my side. It's just uh, Boogie just gets people in foul trouble. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't know how much they're going to guard each other. Um, but that that is a little bit of a worry for me. Uh, maybe enough where if I'm choosing between the two, you're right that maybe Boogie. Uh, this we can transition over to the Sacramento side here. Maybe Boogie's the top play as far as uh, between the two of them, and maybe even just total. I mean, these teams played um, like two weeks ago, I believe, mm -hmm. and Cousins had 40 points, 16 rebounds, four assists, four steals, and a block. Um, is, that, is that good? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty unbelievable matchup for DeMarcus Cousins. I'm really curious what they do tonight, though, because I feel like the wheels are – It is a back-to-back. -back. That is a good point, yeah. Um, it feels like they didn't try in the first half against Utah. I believe DeMarcus Cousins had like one rebound or zero rebounds in the entire first half against Utah a couple nights ago. So I'm really curious what they do against the Lakers tonight. If they've completely packed it in, like yeah. Rondo is a guy who is willing to pack it in. Cousins is a guy who's willing to pack it in. Uh, Rudy Gay is probably a guy who's willing to pack it in. <laughs> um, so if they're all just going to pack it in, that would scare right. me. But if they're not, like, yeah, this is the nuts. I want everyone. Darren Collison, not a guy willing to pack it in, though. Probably not. But, I mean yeah. – <laughs> No, uh, I don't know. Like I, I yeah. thought Costa was a decent play tonight, but when he plays next to Rondo, I feel like no, yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's no, a I problem. agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, the the tough part. Yeah, so I, obviously they're great plays on paper. But I, you're right though; it is a little risky. You know, there's just been so much turmoil. You know, with Boogie being suspended. You know, they're talking about whether they're going to fire George Carl, wait till the end of the season. You know, there's just all this crap that's going on in Sacramento as usual. Um, but on paper, it's hard. It's hard to get past, you know, how good of a matchup it is. Cousins Rondo has been crushing lately. He obviously is a great matchup, especially if Drew's going to be limited. They're going to play him low minutes. Drew's a great defender, but you know, if he's going to get more of Tony Douglas, Rondo is going to crush as far as assists goes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great matchup all around. Uh, but the problem is, everyone knows it. I mean, if you kind of just look at DK, if you look at his opponent rank. Everything is green. It's all like 30th. <laughs> so, like, everyone's going to be on this game, so you're not going to get any value. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm not saying that you don't go these guys, especially in cash for sure. But if you're going to go these guys, get some contrarian plays from other games in there just to get a unique lineup. But obviously, not, you want to have some exposure to this game because it's so high. Yep. Uh, cool. Let's, uh, let's finish up. Last game. Uh, New York. Golden State, um, interesting game here. You know, East Coast versus West Coast as far as you can get. Uh, 219 and a half is the total. Uh, so it seems kind of like a, a nice big total game where we could focus, but then you look at the spread and it's Golden State minus 15. So maybe not so much here. Um, I was just looking at injuries. Lance Thomas is doubtful, so big news there on the New York side. Uh, Golden State side only – uh, really one big you – know, I mean, obviously, Zeely continues to be out and all that stuff, but uh, kind of the, the newer news is uh, Andre Iguodala is going to be out for tomorrow, uh, mm -hmm. which maybe in opens up some stuff for maybe uh, Harrison or, or whoever. But um, let's start with New York. Question is, uh, you know, cross-country trip, playing in Golden State, 15-point spreads, good defense. Are you interested at all? Uh, I mean, I can't remember. I mean, I've rostered Carmelo a couple of times, but I haven't been playing Knicks really um, at all. And I know – No Robo, seen, wow. Yeah, I've seen some people be on Robin Lopez, which I think has been pretty sharp. I mean, Robin Lopez yeah. is way better than, than people give him credit for. Um, yeah. But in this spot, I, I'd be hard-pressed to roster any uh, Knicks. 
Yeah, same here. I think they're alternate plays and not even amazing ones. I think Camaro's, Carmelo is fairly decent. Unfortunately, he's going to – I actually think he's may, might be a little sneaky because I, I would really, really be worried about him if he got uh, the Draymond Green – uh, matchup to start the game, mm-hmm. and then when Draymond came out, if he got the Iggy, um, that's the problem with Golden State. Is, they, is, Iggy, is Iggy playing? No, he's out. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. So normally, like those guys, yeah, it's tough because you get Draymond, who's obviously an amazing defender, and then like the bench comes in, and you think you're going to get a break for most teams, mm-hmm. and you get freaking Andre Iguodala, who is right. maybe the best defender in the league outside of Kawhi. Um, and it's like, oh, my God, when am I going to get a break? So right. maybe maybe it's a little bit easier. Maybe Carmelo, um, you know, fills it up against whoever's the second unit guy. Maybe probably, probably Harrison that would play that. Um, so maybe a sneaky play. 8-6 is not great. EVP is not bad uh, for small forwards, even though his true EVP is a little – uh, it is a little worse just because you know we actually use true position splits and Carmelo actually plays a little more stretch forward than uh than his actual small forward DK position. But yeah, I don't think there's much there for New York. Um, tournament only really. Uh, Golden State side, uh, the question is obviously great matchup, uh, great spread, um, great total. But are you worried about the blowout? Yeah, I mean, you know, even in blowouts, Curry and, and Dre seem to play around 30 minutes, which is enough for them to smash. Um, on a slate like this, I'm not sure I'll, I'll be on them with, so, you know, nine games and, and a lot of options. But right. wouldn't surprise me at all to see uh, Curry and, and Dre still smash. I mean, the guy that I kind of wanted to play with with that injury is, is Harrison Barnes, but he just – He sucks. He's just so bad. Uh, I mean yeah. – even with a raised minute expectation, it's just like so frustrating to roster that guy. So I'm going to try. I, him. I watched him for two years at, at UNC, like uh-huh. in person. Yeah. No, I, he's the most frustrating guy I've watched by basketball. It's awful. Uh, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. In theory, it's he's like the play, but it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, and like they try to give him away on FanDuel and people fall for it all the time. Like, oh, yeah. People always oh, because like small forwards tough and and Iguodal is out and oh Harrison Barnes starts for the Warriors like let me roster him and people do yeah. it all the time and I think um, Iggy's out he's forty five hundred yeah right. play me yeah or even less yeah I think he's been less on it's like forty one yeah or something like that yeah yeah I mean yeah so and I've fallen for it a few times too I mean I've played him it's just yeah. so- you kind of have to at points, yeah. I mean, you don't have to, obviously. That's, that's Yeah, I think on a slate this big with this many options, I wouldn't. This is when you don't, yeah. Uh, but I agree, yeah. Curry, and Dre, I, I think these are – this game is really just kind of tournament only for me just because of the huge spread. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, with, with some – you know, Curry's always an amazing play just because he's Steph. Um, uh, but he's kind of a, around the same price as, as Durant and uh, Brow and Boogie. They're all within, like, $200 of each other, so – uh, on DK again, where it's hard to get in more of our two of those, top, you know, 10K plus guys. I think I like all three with their, you know, situations a little bit better than than steps. So uh, maybe just kind of tournament only for me. Yep, agreed. Cool. Uh, all right, well let's uh, let's start the position uh, quick hits here, uh, and I will run through point guard, small forward, and center, and then uh, Adam, I'll let you cover shooting guard and power forward. Sound good? Cool. Cool. All right. So uh, starting with uh, with Bunker, we got Russ uh, at the top. He's ten five, um, and and kind of these top guys are really the uh, the ones that I'm probably not going to look at in, in cash because I think there's some some value uh, in a little bit of the the lower range. So Russ, Steph, and, and Chris Paul are all nine seven or or higher, and I think they're tournament only for us. Uh, it gets a little more interesting in the John Wall Kemba range at nine four and eight eight, and I think they're both cash plays for us. Um, I, I think it's okay if you want to move down to the, maybe the Isaiah Thomas, even Ricky Rubio range, which we'll get to in a second. But I think John Wall, if you want to uh, pay up, I think Wall Kemba is the those two guys that range in the nine four eight eight range. Sean DK is the the two guys to target. Uh, Drew's a little uh, you know tricky. You know he, potentially he could rest. He's obviously in a great spot on paper, but maybe uh, a little more tournament just because of the uh, yeah, the potential that they might rest him a little bit. Uh, Rajon Rondo, uh, you know is has the Sacramento stench hanging over him. So that's always tough, but his seven, eight price tag against new Orleans and that huge total 
uh, is too enticing not to have some term exposure to. So definitely do that. Kyrie's, uh, you know, Dallas is just kind of a blah matchup with that whole game. So uh, tournament only, even though his price tag seven six is okay. Isaiah is kind of that mid tier guy in the seven K range. Uh, we're down to Isaiah at seven three, Ricky Rubio at six six. Where I think we can kind of get back into the cash range if you don't want to get up to Wall and Kemba. Reggie is always kind of a, a tournament option for me, but I'm not really looking for uh, for for cash there. Uh, Derek Rose is questionable. Um, I actually don't mind him in cash. I know we didn't really mention that, but uh, if he plays, I don't mind him in cash uh, against Washington. But uh, I probably won't end up with him because I don't mind paying up a little more for. Uh, for Isaiah or Ricky. Uh, Teague um, is more tournament for me. Um, and then we're kind of going down to the, the bargain bin because a lot of these guys are uh, are out. So, you know, Tony Douglas, I think, is really interesting uh, in tournaments. And especially, you know, if we think that uh, um, that uh, Drew's going to be limited. Uh, Marcus Smart got the start for Jay Crowder tonight. Um, so they you know, went a little small slash a little big, kind of depending on how you want to look at it with their, their lineup. Uh, so I think he's he's only four two. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect his production that much, but uh, you know I really just kind of monitor that Boston situation tonight. Really kind of look through and maybe use our trends tool and really just try to figure that out because I think that could uh, potentially affect a lot of uh, tournaments tomorrow as far as trying to figure out that Boston uh, situation. Uh, Brandon Jennings, I like tonight. I, I think he's still play tomorrow against Charlotte, even though I don't, I don't think it's amazing. But uh, at three seven, he just really doesn't have to do much to to hit that threshold to hit value. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you got some guys at the very bottom barrel. You got like Randy Foy, um, some of these guys who potentially would like fill in for uh, you know, Deion Waiters. But um, I think uh, other than those kind of like lower end guys, um, you know, smart and, and, um, and yeah, that, that, that's about it. So uh, I think maybe it's a night to, to pay up a little more for, for point guard. I usually do anyway, but maybe that John Wall Kemba range or the uh, Isaiah Rubio range, I think is kind of the, the two spots you want to uh, focus yeah. on for point guard. Uh, yeah. I'll kick to you for shooting guard. Yeah, real quick on, on Brandon Jennings. I mean, two minutes left in the third quarter against the Nuggets, and he's already played 23 minutes, has seven points, 10 assists, two rebounds, and a steal. So, um, so maybe a stronger play than we thought, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at 3.7, he's going to be very, very popular tomorrow, assuming Alfred right. sits out, and, and with good reason. I mean, as I mentioned in the main pod, I mean, Jennings averages 0.83 DraftKings points per minute. If he's going to see close to 30 at 3.7, it's just like – And I think that even probably undersells it because that was a different situation than what he's in now. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah, so shooting guard, I'll let you – Yeah, shooting out. guard – so I think James Harden is in an interesting bounce back spot. We have the Clippers on a back to back where they face the Spurs and this would be a big game for Houston a home against the Clippers who could come in somewhat tired. Harden hasn't played very well lately, which should get the recency bias people off him. Um, I prefer Durant. I prefer Westbrook. I prefer Cousins, but I think that Harden is a fine, fine, tournament play at 10.2 all the way up, up at the top at shooting guard. There's not a lot else that I really like or love at shooting guard. I think the two Orlando guys, I mean, I think it was pretty sharp to play them both tonight, Oladipo and Fournier, given no Vucevic, given no um, Alfred Payton. Um, I thought it was pretty sharp to play both of them tonight. I think it'll be fine to play them both tomorrow, even though it's a back-to-back, uh, even though they're on the road. Oladipo and Fournier just seem to be the guys that Scott Skiles uh, legit trust. I think Batum uh, is always in play for me just because he has such a high ceiling. Like if this guy ever ends up taking 15 shots in a game, um, he's going to go completely ham. And we know his floor is high because of the rebounds and the assists. So he's expensive at 7.5 K, but Batum is certainly in play. Um, the only other two guys I'd look at below there at shooting guard are really Andrew Wiggins, who I think is a better play. Then Zach Levine, only at $300 more. I mean, Wiggins is a candidate for 40 minutes on any given night. Um, Just really solid. I think he gets a really bad rap in the DFS community, but I think Wiggins is is solid even against Memphis. Mm -hmm. And we know this is not the Memphis team that that it normally is. And then I think the cheapest I would go, and this would only be if if Derrick Rose was out, uh, the cheapest I would look at is Etwan Moore at 4.8. I, I don't want to do it, but we've talked about wing players against Washington. 
Um, and if Derrick Rose doesn't play and Pau Gasol is out and Jimmy Butler is limited to 33 or 34 minutes instead of 40, uh, each one is going to have to do uh, something. So I think that's about as cheap as I could go. I think shooting guard is, is pretty thin tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'd probably end up only playing one shooting guard on DraftKings. Yeah. Uh, speaking of thin, we'll move on to small forward. And, yeah, this this position's pretty thin as well. Uh, so, right at the top, we do have Kevin Durant and LeBron. So, uh, you know, two pretty good options. Kevin Durant, you know, I said in the uh, in the game-by-game game breakdown part of the pod, uh, if you are listening to just the quick hits, uh, that I love Durant. Um, I get on paper that maybe Brow and, and Boogie are, are better plays, you know, re- respect to their price. But, you know, Kevin Durant, you know, had that struggle against Kawhi. Uh, and his gets Boston without Jake Crowder and is pissed off. And I just really love this matchup. Um, so I, I get the paper play of those two guys. But, you know, just for me, and I, I'm just naturally a more GBP player anyway, Kevin Durant's probably my favorite play of the night. So uh, if I'm, I'm probably going to go Kevin Durant in most of my small forward spots. So um, LeBron James, I think, is fine in cash. You know, this matchup, again, is, is not s- super amazing really either way. But uh, he's been steady, so I, I don't mind him. At his price point, uh, Melo is in this really tough matchup against Golden State with the huge spread. He's kind of a sneaky tournament play because Iggy's out, um, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily like have a ton of exposure to him. Um, Parsons, I you know, it's kind of in that same matchup against Cleveland. I'm probably fading Dallas altogether, but you know, if you want to have a couple percent of exposure, if you're throwing out 100 lineups to Parsons, it's fine. Uh, Gay is an interesting spot. Actually, actually, we didn't really talk about Gay, but I think he's kind of really intriguing play if you want to pivot off Boogie and Rondo and maybe get some exposure to the Sacramento game uh, with a guy who obviously has a high ceiling at times uh, in, a, in a low price point. Get exposure to this game without getting to uh, the chalk of the game. Uh, I think Gay's kind of interesting. I wouldn't go him in cash, but uh, in tournaments, I do think that he is going to be low owned and potentially interesting. Uh, Tobias, I'm actually fine in cash. I think he's going to be a uh, higher menace. I know we kind of had to debate about this on the game by game breakdown, so you can kind of go listen to that again. Um, I, I'm okay with him in cash, and I think um, Adam is a little more tournament, but uh, you know, uh, make your own choice on that. Uh, you know, using our models and trends and stuff. Uh, and then it kind of gets interesting. Matt Barnes, I think, if the depending on how the Memphis situation, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, because we got Matt Barnes at 5'8", we got Lance at 5'5". Five, five. So, yeah, so just kind of just depending on how that ends up uh, with their injuries, uh, I think I like Matt Barnes the best out of the Memphis guys, but Lance is okay in tournaments. Um, and then after that, there's really nothing. Um, Harrison we talked about that we hate to roster, and that's it. That's honestly it. Uh, oh, yeah, Doug McDermott, 3'7". I don't mind in tournaments. You are skeptical, um, but I, I don't mind tournaments just mostly just because it's against Washington. Uh, but that's it. Small forward is really ugly, except at the top with uh, pretty much Durant and LeBron, and Durant's the guy for me. Uh, so I'll kick to you for power forward real quick, and then I'll end with center, and we'll finish it up. Yeah, that seems to be the case most nights. With, with small forward, it's stacked at the top and then not a lot else. Um, Power forward has gotten deep, and it's kind of started with DraftKings moving DeMarcus Cousins to mm-hmm. power forward. I mean, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, if just look at what he did last time they played New Orleans, um, I believe it was two weeks ago. I, he had like 70 or 80 DraftKings points, just something completely ridiculous. I'm watching the game against the Lakers tonight because I want to see if he is engaged or if he's just pissed off and given up on the whole situation. And I think the latter is possible. So, when I'm spending 10 six on a guy, um, I want to know that he's going to be giving his mm-hmm. all. Uh, so that's important for me on Cousins. You know, I think Anthony Davis is in almost as good of a spot. Yeah, it's on the road. But, you know, again, Sacramento just can't ask for much more than that. Um, so with those two guys at the top, I think are amazing, amazing plays. Uh, if you can only roster one, I would go Cousins. But um, can't certainly can't go wrong with Anthony Davis. And then there's also all these – mid-range plays that I think are fine. Like Aaron Gordon um, is really fine as long as Vucevic is out. Like he's 6.8K, but if he's going to play 33, 34, 35 minutes, like Aaron Gordon is super, super solid. Um, I talked about Serge Ibaka a little bit on the pod, you know, played really well against Portland. I think he's turned somewhat of a corner and, and I like to use him in these really good matchups and Boston who plays up in pace, Boston who struggles against bigs. 
it's kind of an ideal matchup for for Serge Ibaka. So at 5.5K, I, I think he's somewhat interesting. And then obviously the two guys we used on Monday, assuming that the Bulls' injury situation is the same, which I'm not sure it will be, um, but Taj and Nikolai Miritich are, mm-hmm. are really solid, assuming Pau is out, which Pau will be, but we'll see about Dunleavy. We'll see about Rose. Yeah. Um, if all those guys are out again, I think playing Miro and Taj together uh, is perfectly fine. Yep, I, I kind of agree on all that. Uh, okay, I'll quickly hit on center and we'll, we'll finish it up. Uh, so it's top at center, really, the, the top guys, 8-1, you know, this kind of just speaks DraftKings, who's just being down on all these guys. Uh, Towns is the most expensive guy, 8-1. We, we kind of like in cash. Uh, Memphis, you know, it's not a great matchup, the paper's going to say, but that was kind of with Marcus Gasol and – Zebo and all these guys in. Obviously, Memphis is all injured, so the matchup is actually good. Um, so I, I'll roster him with confidence and cash. Uh, it does get interesting because, you know, going down, we do have some other guys right next to him. Uh, we have Andre Drummond at 7'8". We have Dwight Howard at 7'8", um, who are both, you know, really, I think, strong cash plays, um, strong tournament plays as well that you could potentially roster. So um, I, I would say make your own decision. Uh, you know, we kind of rated them – um, our, ourselves as far as, you know, our favorites between the two in the game-by-game game breakdown. But I would encourage you to maybe look through the models and, and kind of uh, figure it out for yourself as far as which of those three you want to go. But I think all three are fine in cash uh, for sure. Uh, kind of going down, DeAndre Jordan uh, obviously is in this back-to-back against the Spurs. So I think that puts him in, in terminal-only play. But I, I would maybe monitor that game a little more. Uh, Gortat, I really like in tournaments. Um, and I'm even fine with cash, but uh, I can understand, you know, his his bad play recently and uh, you know the, the minute uh, issue uh, of late can uh, can put you off cash. But for tournaments, for sure, you should have some exposure. Chicago's not been great, uh, especially you know against big men and against uh, uh, guys who rebound over the pot. Always, uh, always a guy who can get a double double at six six. He's definitely reasonable. Um, kind of going down, Solinger uh, is a guy that you really, uh, you really love uh, tonight and I think is going to be very popular tomorrow. So um, I think that you could still, uh, you know, roster him uh, in cash, you know, where you're not super worried about, um, you know, the chalky plays, but maybe, uh, maybe limit your exposure, especially if he keeps on crushing tonight uh, um, and is going to be too high owned where he's, you're going to get a lot of value. Uh, Rolo. I love the matchup, so I'm probably a fade. And honestly, there's just not not many guys. I'm not going to go down all the way to the 3K range because that's a you know we talked about Al Jeff in his cancer and these guys who you know um, potentially be okay. Even like most spades has been like weirdly really good in like 15 minutes. But like there's uh, like I honestly don't see a guy below like 5K that gets more than 20 minutes. So. Um, you know, I think maybe it's a good thing that they price all these centers down because I think I think you really, really want one of those top three guys, Towns, Drummond, or, or Howard, and and kind of just work from there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I always end up playing one or two of those guys, it seems like, on DraftKings. Cool. All right. Uh, we will end it there. Thanks for listening to the new Daily Fantasy Flex podcast. This is the inaugural one. Adam, thanks for uh, for being a part of it and joining um, any last thoughts on the games or just your life or um, Jerry or, or anything? No, nah, man, life is good. I mean, uh, you know, spent the entire day today talking about basketball. How can you beat that? Nice. True. Yeah, it's living the dream. It really is. Yeah, I hear you. Well, uh, thanks again. Uh, we will uh, put this out tonight. So, uh, you know, we'll talk to you probably down the road. Hopefully we'll have you on a podcast soon. All right, cool, man. My pleasure. Cool. All right. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, Hope you guys take down some tournaments.